What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the AWS Summit in New York City. We're here live. Well, I mean, you're watching us live with AWS on air at the New York Summit, but we're not here live. We will be here later. My name is Aaron Hunter. I'm a principal developer advocate with the AWS Training Live team, joined with my good friend, Trevor. Th thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron. I'm happy to be <laughs> here. I'm, I'm Trevor Spires. I am a solutions architect with AWS's FinTech business, and I am pumped up to talk about a little bit of a little bit of game-based learning with one of my favorite, my faves, generative AI. If you haven't heard of that, I thought one. you were gonna say me. No, well, okay. Uh, I like I. That's that would be hard if I had to choose between you and generative AI. To be honest, because generative AI is gonna change the world, um, but maybe you will too. I'm gonna put my money on you, Aaron. <laughs> I'm gonna put my money on you. <laughs> I'm gonna put my money on the chat. So, All hey, right. chat. Uh, let us know if you've ever heard of game-based learning with AWS and what your thoughts are for what we're going to talk about today. Now, Trevor, what kind of game-based learning are we going to talk about while the chat is, is typing away? What kind of game-based learning? Well, we're going to be talking about, if you haven't heard of it, something called AWS Cloud Quest, which, uh, which I'm a fan of because it does some, there's some nice um, like quiz type learnings. And like, uh, but more importantly, there's these learning paths where you can actually get hands on with AWS generative AI technology. Yeah. And AWS Cloud Quest is part of the AWS Skill Builder platform. So if you haven't heard of that, you can go to skillbuilder.aws. You can also click on the link that we have in the chat here pretty soon. Um, but what we can see here on the screen when Trevor said Cloud Quest, it magically appeared. It's, it's, very much like magic. Uh, it is the game-based learning platform. You can develop some in-demand cloud skills in this immersive role-playing simulation. So the cool thing about it being a simulation is that you get some hands-on experience because it's a, a lab environment that you don't have to pay for because you can start because you can get started for free. We're using Cloud Practitioner. Now, Trevor, Cloud Practitioner is a good starting point, but if someone wants to dive deeper into generative AI, mentioned these like uh what were they the labs the roles right these that's additional right. roles that's yeah. right that's so right people can they, subscribe for that go ahead no i was just gonna say cloud cloud quest comes with like a number of roles aligned to I, I i don't know how many there are these days uh if you if you know you should say the number aaron but aligned to all these different specialties and of the course, number aaron <laughs> i, I oh, don't okay. know but we don't you know, know. What we can do there's a lot we there's can lot. scroll we can down and find out all right, yeah, so like there, there's role specific skills. You can earn your badge, cloud practitioner. That one's free, but the rest do require a subscription. So yep. solutions architect, Trevor. Hi, that's you. Hi, I like that one. I'm a fan. That's what I. That's what I do. Hi, hi mom. I'm a solutions architect. <laughs> hi, mom. <laughs> Serverless developer, machine learning. That's that's a right up the Gen AI alley, right? So there's Amazon SageMaker. We'll yeah, we'll talk yeah. about that later. Definitely. There's definitely. security, data analytics kind of related to generative AI, like cleaning data, maybe? I would say very much related. You know, you gotta, you gotta analyze clean move around data, really you have to build a data foundation before you can harness a lot of your organization's data with generative AI. So, so I'll, I'll count it. It's related, it's okay. related. Okay, and, and securing your data so you can you can leverage the power it's all, of the security. It's all connected, man. You still need networking, yeah. you still need security, you still need to design. Right. Uh, well-architected systems, but we just got to apply it to this new lovely technology. At the end of the day, our generative AI builders, not just the consumers, the ones who jump into Amazon Bedrock and type a couple prompts, but those who are designing and building these, these applications are the ones who would probably most benefit from taking all the roles. I would, I would say so. And I would say what's great is if you're already like an AWS user, like a lot of that existing AWS knowledge that you have around security, around designing AWS systems uh, can be applied to this, this wild new frontier. Exactly. And speaking of the wild new frontier, let's jump into how they can get access to these through that subscription model. Uh, so if you click on that, it tells you all about the subscription for, for AWS Skill Builder. Uh, $29 a month is your starting individual monthly subscription plan. And that gets you access beyond just the free stuff. I mean, you do get 600 free courses, but you can get access to CloudQuest and Builder Labs and everything by paying for uh, the, the full model. And the cool thing about it is like you get access to everything for $29 a month. So 
Um, yeah, yeah. I want to I want to draw attention actually to that. It says one one thousand plus lab experiences. So you might be familiar with like the uh, the, the 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 popular the 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 the, the long the, the the long lived AWS free tier. But there's a lot of things that if you wanted to experiment with an AWS, you would have you would your credit card would start to get charged. Like for example, the lab that we're going to show you today, fine tuning an LLM with with SageMaker. And so I I like to point that out because there's really so much value in getting to uh, go deep into AWS services that may not actually uh, qualify for the free tier because they there's some you know compute run under the hood that that somebody's got to pay for. So this is nice. Exactly. It's nice to have a sandbox environment and with access to thousands of labs. Well, one thousand exactly. Me, <laughs> one one thousand one thousand plus. Okay. So okay. over a thousand. It could be thousands, but it's at least a thousand. <laughs> at least a thousand. <laughs> and then because we've had the page pulled up for so long, uh, people have probably done the math in their mind, like 29 a month, it doesn't really equal 29 times 12, do the math, carry the one. That's less than 449. Well, I'm gonna tell you, you don't get access to the AWS digital classroom courses with the monthly plan. So if you pay for it as an in annual subscription, you get access to the digital classroom so you can take classes at your own pace too. But we're not here for that. We're here to talk about AWS Cloud Quest and generative AI, which is this right here. That looks like now, a draft to me. Are drafts generative AI? This is Cloudia. Oh. So the, the Cloudia from the AWS Cloud. See what they did? <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Cloudia. Like Cloud, Claudia, but Claudia. like Cloud. Okay. Yeah, Cla I see. Yes, I see what yeah, they did there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cheeky. <laughs> so cheeky. All <laughs> right. So Claudia here is our mascot for AWS Cloud Quest. I actually have Claudia is right here on my shirt. Um, but Claudia is repping these generative AI goggles, these virtual reality goggles here, and and hovers through the entire city. You actually create your own character. I'll show you that here in just a few moments. Um, but there are 15 different a solutions or labs as some people call them, but the solutions here allow people to get some cloud computing essentials. I'll zoom in a bit for all of our friends uh, across the room. <laughs> so here we can see cloud computing essentials. You're talking about Amazon S3, uh, AWS, Amazon EC2. Those are your first two solutions or your first two labs out of the 15. Now there's 13 others that go a little bit deeper into generative AI. There's the introduction to generative AI, and then there's fine tuning large language models on Amazon SageMaker or the LLMs as large language models. Um, and it just keeps going and going and going even deeper into the world of generative AI. Um, Trevor, which one of these should we maybe get started with today? I'm going to say I, I really want to take a look at uh, one of these fine tuning uh, options be just, be just because I know that that's something that isn't always available to learners um, in, in like an Amazon free tier. So I think that's a great example of, of one that, okay. that's, uh, that, that you might want to take a look at. And by the way, while we're on this page, if you scroll to the top of the of the options here, I just want to point out like another thing that I'm just, just realizing about this is like you could come in. Oh, go down, go down, go down. Wait, not not that high. Oh, not that high. Oh, right here. Oh. Stop, stop. All right, you, we say, you know, you if you, have, if you don't have a lot of Amazon experience, like we're setting you up with also the foundations. With like S3 and EC2, which by the way, if you if you want to get into this world of AI and machine learning, you need to know how to interact with these two services, especially S3, because that's where you're going to put a lot of your training data or data that you need to load into to your model. So it's, I, I just I caught that and I just wanted to point out it's kind of cool. You don't necessarily need to even have a lot of AWS prereq knowledge. You could pop right in and start with the foundational services like S3 and EC2, and then then throw yourself right into the deep end with SageMaker right in to the deep end. And we're going to do that with these fine tuning large language models on Amazon SageMaker. Yeah, that's what I think I heard you say. So yes. the first thing yes. is once you're signed in, let me zoom out a bit for all of our friends here who are who scooted closer. <laughs> all right. So it is part of the AWS Skill Builder subscription. So once you're signed in, once you have your account created, then you get access to the CloudQuest generative AI uh, role here. And the cool thing about it is once we click on this, boom, we are signed into the game. Well, we have to start the game first, right? So here's the main landing page. You can go to cloudquest.skillbuilder.aws. We'll have a link in the chat for all of our friends. But once we click start game, then that's gonna pull up our loading page and it's gonna it's gonna show us like the first introduction to the game here. Now, wait, Trevor, wait, 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 hold up. Do I need an AWS what? account to log into this, Aaron? No, you need an AWS Skill Builder account, but not ah. an AWS account. So that's pretty cool. You don't actually need one. But Trevor, you've played AWS CloudQuest before. 
while this is loading, what was your what's your favorite thing about the game? I have I, no I would I, I've grown out of this through in, in later in my life, but digitally, I have to say I'm a bit of, a bit of a digital hoarder. I like accumulating pets. I'm not gonna lie. I like accumulating pets. This is a game where that you can get a lot of little some pet a Miss Gorilla is is that her is that their name? Um, I think so. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I like to I like collecting pets. I also I also like um, shooting drones with like the little laser gun. Like I I've, I've spent way too much time doing that. Uh, and then of course like the moments where I'm actually in the hands on labs um, are always fun because like that's where I for me when when I get hands on like like the the drafts are cool and fun and the pets are fun. But like when it comes to learning, I want to jump into the console. I want to start building stuff. And so I like that right. there's like a guided way to just just help you flow into that naturally and if you get bored you can start shooting drones and playing with gorillas there really is a guided way and one thing we can see is well you talk about the drones here they are flying over us we can see that we have the generative ai solution already built out this this role built out so the guided way is let's say if you don't know how to get there um, a really easy guide because it says like there's a recertify, you have cloud practitioner, data analytics. It tells you how many of the solutions that you need to complete before you get that role or the badge for that role. Um, so let's say if you're already in cloud practitioner and I'm going to go ahead and choose that. This is what would be a very similar experience for you. So um, I'm going to switch over to that role real quick. And then it's going to switch me back over to the cloud practitioner role. It says 100%. Woo, woo. Um, but here we have the cloud practitioner role. And I'm going to show everyone what it looks like to switch back over to generative AI solutions. So click that one and click choose and then confirm. OK. And here we go. Look at us. We did it. We're now in the generative AI role. All right, and there we are. So we are now inside of our generative AI role, our, our path. It's going to be a really great way for us to break down. Now, this little cell, cell phone XR device icon thing, you can click on that, and it'll show you what the different solutions are that you have available to you. You can go ahead and click on Route and Go, and I've played the game quite a bit. Uh, Trevor, I asked you what your favorite part was. You said pets. My favorite part is these different like vehicles that you can jump wow. on. There's like a paper airplane. There's a hoverboard. Uh, you have a horse on a wagon. I wish wow. they would bring like an alien spaceship. I want to jump oh, in a spaceship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would be good. I, first I was like, wait, you want to like get on an alien shoulders and like, well, like have them like walk that, you around the, a UFO was, or some spaceship. I was visually yeah. going there, but then I thought through that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cloud quest team, formal request. Can we get a spaceship that I can jump into and hover around? Maybe it's already a thing. Yeah. We're gonna need to submit a feature request for that one. For sure. Right. <laughs> So the cool thing about what's happening now is you don't have to like navigate through the cloud quest universe, to try to find this, this person that you're going to talk to and help them solve that solution because it's doing all that work for you. Now, this is our first person that we just navigated toward, but Trevor, you said you wanted to go through the large language model conversation. So fine tuning an LLM with Amazon SageMaker, uh, you can click show me and jump directly into that, or we can route and go. And I see it way back here. Uh, there's oh, a hello. Oh, God. Oh, I wow. love hot air balloons, right? You ever, you ever been on uh, a hot we'll air balloon, Aaron? I have never been on a hot air balloon. Not, no. I have been I, in a basket on a ground. Okay. I've, I've never been one either, but I went to a festival one time in somewhere in Arizona. It was really cool. A lot of hot air balloons. And I remember. But <laughs> so, were right, they on the ground? They were not. They were in the sky. That's why it was so cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, chat, let us know if you've ever been to a hot, in a hot air balloon. Let us know if you've ever been at a hot air balloon festival. Let us know if you've ever touched a hot air balloon or if you've never seen a hot air balloon in person. I don't know. All the options. Favorite emoji for engagement. Okay. Uh, do do the survey, the on-air survey. We'll, we'll have a link somewhere. <laughs> All right. So here uh, we are again still within CloudQuest and we have fine tuning and LLM on Amazon SageMaker. There's two people talking to each other. One person is me. The other person is Trevor. I'll let you take your pick, Trevor. Um, I, 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 I'm a, I'm a man without hair, and I, so I always want to uh, be somebody that that is 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 blessed with hair. So I'm going to choose the the left hand side with the with the buns on top. That's who I'm going with. Okay, so we're going to say uh, Prince Prince Trevor with the Prince Trevor buns. Got it. Prince Trevor with the um, yeah the Princess Leia Prince Trevor buns. That's right. Right. I mean, they have glasses. They're not the yellow glasses that you vibe with quite often, but uh, you got them. Please tell me you have them. Always, I got these yellow glasses, man. When oh, I need to put a vibe shoot, on. on. Full. There we are. We have just entered yes. a vibe, folks. 
Everything's yellow and it's groovy. Yellow mellow vibe town. All right. So here we are. Uh, Trevor, go ahead. Just tell us the problem uh, that you're trying to work through. Oh, okay. Well, hello there. Uh, I need to drive some innovation. Uh, so we're exploring the use of fine tuning AI models over here in uh, Cloud Quest land. I'm thrilled at the idea of working with uh, pre trained LLMs. Can you tell me more about the benefits of LLMs and generative AI? Why, why, yes, I can. And as a player of the game, for each of you who are watching live today, uh, you can actually click through this and you right here. So this is me on the right hand side, the player of the game. Certainly fine tuning LLMs with internal data is a powerful technique in generative AI. These models pre-trained on vast amounts of data. And the cool thing about this entire scenario is if you click, keep clicking back and forth through it, then the context changes and it builds, it builds out the scenario for you to solve, which is why this is called a solution. So we'll go ahead and cl click clicking through it, do it on your own terms. Please do read through it, understand what you're getting yourself into before you jump over to accepting the agreement. Now, Trevor, do you want to close us out? Can you show us? how to find yes, LLMs by using sample custom data, please. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for helping us. Let's go ahead and start it. Now what's going to happen next is we do have, um, some diagrams that get shown up on the screen, but Trevor, what if I don't understand these services that we're going to use with this generative AI fine tuning LLM thing? Ooh, that's a good question. I, I wonder if anybody's thought about that. They have, if you look at the left hand side of this here screen, you're going to see uh, if there's something you're not familiar with, let's say, for example, you, you understand a little S3, you understand a little CloudFront, but you want to understand a little bit of what API Gateway does. You just click into that little section and you're going to get a, an overview of the concept of how that service works, which is very helpful as you're trying to learn quickly. It's all embedded into this interface. Which one of these services should we maybe learn more about specific to generative AI in this context? Well, in this context, we're probably going to want to learn about SageMaker. All right, so we'll click on Amazon SageMaker. It's gonna pull it up here. And it's an overview of Amazon SageMaker. It's currently talking to me. I gotta mute that because it's it's distracting me a little bit. But hopefully it won't be distracting for you when you're walking through it and learning about it because it's gonna to talk to you about what Amazon SageMaker is, how you can best apply it, and then help you be prepared within these three minutes here to take this solution or walk through the rest of the lab. Now, the lab doesn't leave you there with just the, the video and say like, ha, good luck. No, the lab actually walks you through step by step with these different architecture diagrams of what you're going to do, what you're going to build out, where you're going to go through the architecture diagram as you jump into the actual lab itself, which is an AWS account that is provisioned by CloudQuest for you as part of your subscription model. That's right. That's right. So if you if you walk through this all all the way, we're gonna walk you through how to, uh, like fine tune a large language model, which is a pretty sophisticated thing that I would say a lot of organizations are are thinking about right now. Because if you just just to just to, to zoom out, right? If you are or you work at a company, let's say a company that's been around for more than ten years, that company's probably sitting on a lot of data, a lot of proprietary data, a lot of customer data, a lot of data that helps them do their business better already. So fine tuning really just allows a company to take that existing data and train or, or, or adjust to tweak one of these powerful LLMs to, to learn a new skill or become good at something in their domain. The, the word that's used oftentimes is domain adaptation. I like that word. Uh, it makes me sound smart when I say domain adaptation. Uh, but it, it is helpful. Like, like let's say uh, out of the box, uh, the LLM doesn't know about your domain or like the jargon of your business. This, this is a great example of a time when you could use fine tuning uh, to get a little bit more out of those LLMs. Exactly. And we walked through this whole diagram to understand this domain adaptation necessity that we need, right? So I'm going to go back a little bit so we can kind of walk through and talk about it a bit here. But um, Trevor, in this first diagram, then the, in the solution, a pre-trained large language model LLM is fine-tuned for specific tasks or that domain adaptation that you said, yeah? And then the second step here, what are we looking at? The second step. Oh, yeah. Right now, what you're looking at is basically this is showcasing the uh, the environment that you're going to have to log into. You know, basically, whenever you are um, 
developing in SageMaker, you're going to use a, a notebook or like a maybe SageMaker Studio. But really, uh, it looks like we're, we're going to load some FAQs. So like there's a data set of FAQs that we're going to load using SageMaker Studio. Uh, we're going to prep that data and then uh, using SageMaker and SageMaker APIs will actually run a fine tuning job on a underlying large language model. We got the Lambda. Lambda function is used. Yeah. Uh, Lambda functions. Yeah. Interface. Yep. All these bits and pieces that, that, that I would say that whole, like the whole row at the bottom is really just about connecting your end users to your application, allowing a user to maybe send in a prompt and then everything above that bottom line, the SageMaker, the S3, the studio, that, that those are all the pieces in the data necessary to actually tame the, the, the large language model with your, with your custom data. Yeah. Exactly. So when we say like for the builders out there, like you're building all the stuff up here, but then you're allowing your, your users to access your large language model through this endpoint, right? So you're building both the endpoint that's accessible publicly or privately, if you so desire. And then you're also fine tuning the data sets, uh, using data analytics or data normalization techniques or whatever you might need to do. Uh, but this allows you to load that clean data into your large language model and then grant access to your users to that large language model through these different endpoints. Now we can click over to the plan section here. We have two different labs. There's the practice lab and the goals of the practice lab. And then we have the DIY section, which is where you can prove that we've taught you something or that you learned something, or you can skip straight to the DIY if you want to. If you if you so choose, you could. Hard, that's hard mode. Go straight to the DIY <laughs> without any without any guidance. <laughs> hard mode, <laughs> right? So. Uh, we'll go over to the practice area and then here what we see is fine tuning LLM on Amazon SageMaker with 43 steps. Now we don't have a, a lot of time to show you all of this, but we will take just a few moments here to kind of walk you through what some of these steps might look like. But as you click through the steps, it's going to walk you through the, the management console and where you should click. So if you've never done this before, you don't have to worry. You can actually do it. Uh, exactly as it's showing you and click through and they, they do maintain this too. So the cloud quest team maintains the screenshots and the labs and the solutions. And if you see any issues or if you're like, it's confusing or that's wrong, click the report a bug button down here at the bottom and let them know. And they, they do listen. Uh, hey, Curtis, good to see you. <laughs> um, all right. So we can go ahead and click all the way through here. Cause I think we have about one minute left before we're getting kicked off the stage, but Hey everyone. Go through all 43 steps, do the DIY, see if you can get through uh, or do the practice solution. That's the one that we just looked at right here. Go through the DIY and then validate that you've learned something by testing it. So you input your SageMaker endpoint and your model name, and it's going to check to make sure that you've done the tasks here within your uh, solution. Trevor, what should we close out with before we leave our friends to go so, uh, solve this solution and, and prove to us, how do they prove yeah. to us that they've done it? Well, I, that's a great, question. I was just thinking if today is New York summit, I would say if, if somebody manages to go through this lab and fine tune their own model, and then maybe tag me and Aaron on LinkedIn or send us a message and let us know that you, you finished it, the, uh, that, that would be a, a, an incredible feat. We'll reshare your post. We'll give you some thumbs up. Maybe, maybe we'll even find something special for the first person that, that lets us know that they, that they finishes lab, but I, I'd love to know if anybody watching this gets in there, fine tunes their first model, or, or even just gets access to this generative AI solution path. Um, I think that would be incredible. What do you think? It would be. Yeah. And you know what? We're going to be back uh, later today, right? So we're going to be live sitting next to each other, not just like stacked on top of each other. Let's get rid of that stack. Okay. Hold on. And boom, there we go. So now we're sitting next to each other again and boom. Um, if you happen to do this before we're live later, we'll shout you out live, but thank you, Trevor, for all of your help today. Telling wait, us wait, about uh, large don't models. we have a, don't we, and, and you need to be here when we're live later, because I think we have like a, like a, like a super cool launch that we can't talk about yet, but, but Shh. come, come, come join us. Come join us. All right. Stay tuned, everyone. Don't forget, do the AWS on air survey. There's gonna be a link in the chat. So that way you can make sure to provide your feedback. Thank you to our ASL interpreters, to our wonderful behind the scenes staff. Thank you to Trevor. And thank you to all of you for being here. Stay tuned for more from AWS On Air.